All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. And tonight, I just want to do a quick update. Guys, <laughs> I've been catching a little slack from folks. And first off, I want to say, uh, in the event that, let's say you purchase a file from me, and let's say there's a small something that you don't like about it, or, you know, maybe I made a mistake, and uh, something like that. You, you can message me and just let me know, hey, I got this, is there... You know, is there a problem with it? And uh, and we'll I'll work with you. You can ask anybody. I'll work with you to try to correct the issue and get it out to you. But in light of a couple of uh, comments and messages that I've received recently, just know that if you come to the Clack Shack, bring it an attitude, you're going to get it back. Okay, guys? All right. <laughs> just right. Let's just put that out there. You know, I try to keep my files affordable and... Uh, I try to keep my service top notch, you know, but sometimes some of these comments, guys, it's, it's uncalled for. <laughs> so anyway, uh, <laughs> let's just get to what we're here for. Okay. I had to make a few adaptations to the X2 S1 jig kit. Uh, some oversights on my part, some of it, it wasn't a big deal, but, uh, you know, have it as it is. It's the internet. You're going to get some, some folks trying to troll me or whatever the case may be. And, uh, you know, they get to see the other side of the clack shack. But anyway, stick around, guys. I'm going to show you what I've done to the updates. I've also included a few extra things that I've come up with uh, that makes the S1 a better machine, in my opinion. And I threw them in the box with it, so to speak. So, uh, so if you order the jig kit, you'll get these. But to make sure everybody understands it completely, because there are some people having some problems with, with opening it that are new to XCS. And I just want to make sure I explain that thoroughly. So we're going to go over those. But stick around. I'll be right back. All right, guys, first off, let's get down to the computer because that's where all the action is going to be. So moving you down. All right, so when you get the file and you open it, it should look like this. Okay, keep in mind, guys, if you're new to XCS, down here at the very bottom, you're going to see these little layers or these, uh, I guess they call it canvases. Uh, each canvas contains a different part of the file. All right, before anybody asked, uh, you know, people are asking me, well, what, what size material do I need? By default, this machine was built to operate well, like a 12 by 20 uh, piece of material. But you can go in here to these files if you're trying to recycle some scrap or whatever. And just click on the file, click on the shape. And like this one's 461.57 millimeters wide and 292 high. So... If you've got a piece of wood laying around that meets those specifications, you can recycle that and reuse that. Uh, so, but basically, just know you're going to need approximately 12 by 20 inches of material to, to cut this first piece out. Because I tried to make it as big as I could and still keep it uh, the size that you could cut it with the S1. Because why make a tool to be used with the S1 that you can't cut with the S1? Me personally, I could have cut mine with uh, one of my other machines and made it much, much bigger. But then the only people who would be able to use it would be the ones that had a bigger machine like I have. So, you know, trying to keep it to where the machine that it's intended to be used with can cut it, this is what I come up with. And, uh, and like I said, it works. It works for me. Gives you about, you know, 10 inches of area to create whatever kind of jigs or whatnot that you want to. And uh, works pretty well. But this is the first layer. This is the topmost layer, and you can't see it right here because this little thing's in the way. But there's a little a little lineup hole that's right behind this. Uh, you would think I could move that, but okay, there it goes. There's the lineup hole. And that hole needs to be in that position, or this won't work <clears throat> because that's the screw that retains everything uh, to the wall of the machine to keep it squared and in place. All right, layer two. This is actually the cut file right here. This blue line out to here. The only reason this little square is here, guys, is just so that you can cut your extra little piece of material and have an extra jig panel. If I left those ears on there, this would become scrap. But by making another line here, it cuts this panel out, makes it square, 
and you can use it as a jig panel. So this is, this is one of your jig panels that you can use to uh, make things. If all you need is a jig panel, you can come in here and select this other shape and this other one that protrudes out here, set them to ignore and only burn the part that you need uh, and save a little time. All right, third layer. This third layer right here is basically just used to make it taller. This shape here you'll see is slightly smaller than this area here. So that part of this right here will create that shelf that the jig panels sit on. So, so you've got the first and the second layer, which gives you room for a spacer and a jig. And then the third layer, which is technically just the part that holds everything else up in its place. This, if you're just needing a jig panel, just open the file, go to jig panel, cut this. That's, that's all you gotta have. And you can, like I said, click on this. It'll give you the dimensions of the object, which is about 251 by 251. And so if you have a piece of material that's 260 by 260, that scrap, you can definitely cut you a jig panel out of that. So that's one reason I broke these things up and tried to give you know each, each piece its own canvas. Uh, the squaring insert. This, basically, you take this piece, guys, and you glue it to one of these. Just line it up however you want to orient it. That way, you can do it this way. However you want it oriented, it doesn't matter because you can, you can flip this thing around or whatever you need to. Uh, but that just assists you in square items or even, even, I guess you could use it for round items too. But with square items, it just gives you a straight edge to use to make sure that the item is properly aligned with the gantry when you're engraving it so nothing running downhill or anything like that. Now, the latest addition that I put in here is everybody had asked me for my RA2 holder. This is, the, this is technically not intended to be used with the jig system that I created, but you can take this like I did and attach it below your machine if you have the riser base and uh, kind of secure your machine like I did with mine and take this little, this little RA2 holder, put you a couple of screws in it or some glue, or you can duct tape it if you, if you don't want to screw into your table or whatever's under there. You can duct tape it. You can use carpenter's tape. What, however you want to adhere it to the table that your machine is on. As long as your machine stays still, this thing stays still, you make sure that everything is square with each other. This will allow you to set the RA2 chuck below your machine and, and be confident that it's not gonna be moving around and it's not going to be out of square. So, but this, this was actually part of my old X-Tool D1 kit, but I just went and exported the, SN, the SVG, brought it in here and added you guys another canvas. Uh, so, so that, hopefully that'll, that'll help. Like I said, just a little bonus uh, piece for this setup. Uh, because this all things S1 on this kit. I mean, this, this will not or is not intended to work. I'm not going to say it won't. With a little modification, you can make it work on something else. But it's intended for the S1. And uh, so, being that I didn't want to have to put this on Etsy by itself. Because I just, you know, I, I don't feel like charging 4 or $5 for a simple file like this. So, I just throwed it in this bundle. Uh, so if you buy one, you get both, and uh, hopefully it'll make your, your X-Tool S1 adventures a lot more pleasurable and easy to follow. But I'm not going to redo the entire video of the, uh, of the kit. So we've already done that. So let's get back to the camera. So that's the basic setup of the jig kit, guys. And uh, I'll drop a link to the video that I did that details how the jig system works. Uh, like I said, it's not material specific necessarily. I do recommend using four millimeter or thicker material with most projects, but if you want to use three millimeter, three millimeter material could work. It's just going to be a little thin. Uh, the pieces are going to be awfully, awfully flimsy. So, you know, you could, if you have some scrap material that's three millimeter and you're trying to do that stack to, to give you the height to where it'll sit on the crumb tray the way it needs to, then use some three millimeter, you know. Uh, you could technically use cardboard if you wanted to. A little, a little more risk of flames with cardboard. Uh, but you can use any material you want. I used actually some, some little one inch squares of regular pine material that I had left over. Uh, just to keep from having to burn through a bunch of plywood because I had some scrap that I could use. It really doesn't matter as long as you put something under there outside where the laser is going to be going. That can space this thing up high enough to make it flat once you connect it to the side of the machine now 
if you've got the tumbler, they included one of these little guys. It's not a bad idea when you're putting that jig system in there to put this on there and just, as long as your table is level, check your table first and build it up until you get it level. You know, give you a good little, you know, a good little gauge if you're not real good at eyeballing things because you don't want the jig kit sitting in there sideways because your focus is going to be off. You want to make sure, because you've only got one point of contact technically. So you want to make sure that the spacers that are under this side, just pull it up until it's even and level. That way, when you set the focus, the focus is correct all the way across your workpiece. Because if it's running uphill or downhill, your focus is going to be off one side or the other. But that's it, guys. Like I said, I <laughs> and to some of these guys, y'all got to realize I work 24-7 from the time my feet hit the floor until the time I uh, get up in the morning. And some of these comments, guys, they, they catch me. They catch me off guard because it's like, why be disrespectful? I try to treat every human being on the planet the way I want to be treated. And uh, if you come out of the door throwing comments, throwing insults, or insulting my intelligence, be prepared to suffer the consequences. You're going to get it back. That's all there is to it. I, I treat people the way I want to be treated. But you come at me, I'm coming back at you. That's, that's in my nature. It's in my blood. I can't help it. Uh, I apologize to people who get offended when that happens. But you set the tone, not me. So just remember that, guys. And for, for those of y'all that, that have, have watched the channel and know me well enough, you know, I, I'm as easy going as they, all, as they come. But uh, as my flag says, <laughs> don't tread on me. But anyway, guys, until next time, I hope you enjoy the kit. I hope everybody out there that wants it, that needs it, can use it. And I did have an oversight. Let me show you what my oversight was before we go because I did have an oversight. And if someone had just said, hey, check this out, it, it would have went over a lot better. So let's show you what, what happened. So with this file, if you look real closely, and it's hard to see, guys, especially when you've got a crappy monitor like I have in the shop, there's actually a faint line right there where my machine, technically the work area stops right there. Well, guys, you know I'm a light burn fanatic. So I didn't think about the fact that this... 30 something, 20 something millimeters of work area can't be used. And you can't see that faint line unless the machine is powered on. So what had happened was this file, when I brought it in, I centered it in the workspace like that. Cause that's the, you see the little brackets, you see the tools, they're telling me it needs to go there. That's center. And so I centered it. Well, now if you look up at the top, you can see there's that shaded area. Well, that was an oversight on my part. I did not think about until a couple of people mentioned it to me that uh, X-Tool S1 resizes the work area based on the module. And since I got the big honking 40, uh, I lose a lot of workspace. And other people that have the 40 lose it as well. So what I had to do is I had to go in and slide that file down and get it precariously close to the edge all the way around so that now when I frame it doesn't pop up that warning because what was happening is a few people were getting it and they didn't know to select it and move it down. So when you would try to cut it, this is what you would get. And that was an oversight on my part, guys. I did not realize it. I'm a light burn fanatic. I'm just learning XCS. You guys know that. And so what I've done is I've went in here and slid them down for everybody and got it to the point to where now, if you try to burn it, you don't get that warning. So that's the only problem that there was, but some people had some very expressive ways of uh, mentioning it to me, and it kind of caught me off guard. So <laughs> I hope you like it, guys. I hope it works. Go check out the Etsy shop, and as always, for all you guys that support the Clack Shack, I appreciate it, uh, but it will. the file is available in my shop for like five bucks for the whole kit, and now you even get the RA2. So there you go. But until next time, guys, be safe, and uh, have a good day.